You good? All right. Let's get started. Last uh, class, well, at least for me, before things get break. Right? I don't know about if you have classes tomorrow. Um, so I hope that uh, you're all going to have a good break. Um, um, what my plan is for, for today is to finish talking about multi-criteria uh, or goal-oriented decision-making like we started talking about on Friday. And then, excuse me, uh, then um, if there's any time left over, I can ask questions that you guys have, probably more on a one-on-one -on -one basis than a group basis about your final projects. On uh, Monday, next week then, will be review and homework that is due for then, uh, but then leave the rest of the time open for review for the third and final exam of the class on Wednesday. Um, and I will post, after we're done with the class today, uh, most recent exams that you can use to, to review and study for, for that. Uh, of course, then Wednesday would be that exam day. And then Friday, the last day of classes, will just be a, a work day where you can finish getting all your stuff ready um, and check in with me if you have questions for, for the final um, project before it is due then. Uh, and it will be due um, whenever the final exam for this class is due. Because during the final exam, rather than having an exam period, what we'll do is have group presentations. So each one of your groups is going to present a summary of the results that you found uh, for, for your class project. So that's, that's kind of what we're shooting for here for the last week and a half of classes and final exams. My notes have, in my uh, office. Um, Um, let me go get that real quickly because I had a problem I wanted to go through as an example. We'll walk through that um, in Excel and uh, in a graph and, and then we'll do a uh, question from your book. So rather than just sitting around doing nothing, start reading question 14 <coughs> while I'm getting the, my, my notes. <laughs> get to that question in a second, uh, but we want to look at this question first. So let's say we are a small mom and pop shop selling um, custom computers to, to various customers. And so we've got two lines of our, our computer laptop brand. We've got our CP400 and our CP500. And uh, what we're caring about here are some uh, modular components that we can add or subtract from these one. In, in this case, this takes two memory modules, uh, but this one only takes one memory module. Uh, they both <coughs> uh, require one case. 
this does not have a hard drive, and this one has an external hard drive to it. Uh, so this one takes one hour to assemble, and this takes one and a half hours to assemble. And finally, our profit is $200 for this, and our profit here is for $500. <clears throat> All right, um, the next thing we need to know are what we have available to us. Uh, we have a thousand memory modules. We have 600 cases. And we have 500 hard drives. Um, and specifically, these are our weekly supplies. So we have contracts with a supplier to get this in each week for, for us to be able to, to manufacture this many units available to us. All right? <clears throat> Questions about what I have so far listed? All right. So we've got four goals that we would like to be able to achieve, if we can, and, and this is in priority order. So goal number one is more important than goal number four. Um, so we have a contract that with a government entity that we need to supply them with 200 uh, CP400 uh, models. So we need to make sure that we meet that contractual obligation. Goal number two, once we've met that, we would like to produce 500 machines a week. Goal number three, provided we can make those first two goals, is that we would like to have at least $250,000 profit per week. And then finally, goal number four is that we have up to 400 uh, hours of labor per week that we can use to make these machines. So let's um, make our model here. Uh, what are the <coughs> constraints? Let's ignore the objective for a second, because the objective changes as we go through these different goals. But uh, our constraints, our functional constraints at least, should not change throughout the process. So what are the constraints that we have to operate under for all four of these goals? Yeah. Oh, the supplies that are like the weekly supply limit. Okay, so give me one constraint. Um, I guess less than a thousand memory modules. Okay, so something's going to be less than a thousand for our memory <coughs> modules. What is that going to be? Maybe what we should step back. What are the variables that we're trying to compute? Say it louder. Number of each memory module. Number of each. So I'm just going to call call this uh, F. Or, no, that doesn't work. I'll just go call this uh, C sub four and C sub five. Okay. That's the number we're going to make for for each one of these. Okay. So given those are our variables, do we have any other variables that we need to choose? This is the only thing we care about, right? So given those being our variable, how do we relate those to 1,000? Okay. 2C4 
plus C5, right? Because we have to use two memory modules here and one memory module here. What's another constraint? Memory's not our only constraint, right? The number of cases we have. Okay. What's that going to be? Just be C4 plus C5 plus plus the number of cases. Any more constraints? <coughs> yeah, Nick. Uh, the hard drives. Okay. So why don't it just be C5 plus M equal to 500 because C4 doesn't use it? Anything else? Well, these are our functional constraints. We might include the working time to assemble, and we might include the profit as we get to these goals, but they're not, this is not a maximized profit solution, right? It's, that's the third priority on here. We've made a commitment, we have to stick with our commitment. <coughs> okay? So, How would we represent goal one as our initial objective? Right, so, so that first one, we would write C4 has to be at least 200. Because, but since we are going to want to represent this with multiple objectives, we're going to put this in terms of the equations that we did on, on Friday where we have our deviation variables. So we're going to end up being exactly equal to, to this, right? And what we're going to do is we're going to subtract off our deviation value, let's call this for our contract, where we go too many, we make too many of these, or we add our deviation where we went below. So this is going above, going below. Do we care if we make too many of these machines? That doesn't bother us, right? We just need to make sure that we have at least 200 to deliver to this, this contract. So our objective is going to start off as minimizing this value right here. We want to make sure that that is non-positive. If we can make 200 machines, we're going we're gonna to do that. All right. So let me pause here and do our um, graph to visualize again. I'm not asking you to solve it, but I want you to see what we're doing um, because then it can help you kind of think about what we're doing. So I'm going to draw each of these three functional constraints first, so I'll make this one blue, this one red, and this one green right here. Alright? So, uh, I'm going to make these uh, units of 200. That will make it the easiest to, to solve. So, I will put, I don't know, C4 here. I will make this C4. Five down here. All right. So let's diagram it. So when C4 is zero, that would make C5 a thousand. So two, four, six, eight, ten. And one. I'm gonna make this in units of a thousand. Uh, hundred, sorry. And if C5 is zero, then C4 is five hundred. Okay, and are we above or below this line? Below. We're below it, right? We can't make more than that because of those memory modules. Okay? <coughs> Red line. We're at 600 for both of them, right? 
on the drum. And now we have other below that line. Here, we have below that line as well. And then our green line, C5 is less than or equal to 500. Enough. Are we to the left or right of that? So where is our feasible region before we consider our objective function? Here. It's in this left-hand part of right in, in here. Right? <clears throat> so for our first objective, what we're going to do is we're going to add this constraint right here. It only considers C4. So if these are zero, then we have to have this line right here. And it's going to be anywhere above that line. So we still we still know that there's a lot of locations that can satisfy that. So we already know, before we've even solved this, that we are going to meet this first goal. So let's put our next goal in, which is that we want to have at least 500 machines a week. So the 500 is going to be here. What's going to be on the left-hand side of that equation? Uh, let's do M. Okay. <clears throat> and again, is it okay if we go over, if we make more than 500 machines in this scenario? Right? It's it. We want to produce at least this many. Maybe I should right, put it. that there. So we don't care if we go over. We only care if we go under. So we're going to include that in our objective function. So now I'm going to draw this one. We've got C4 and C5. So that one above this line. So we still have a feasible region. Now it's this, this very thin slice right here that is, is feasible. Before it was this whole area, but then we crossed this out. And then what we did with our second goal, we crossed this out right here. In addition, we still have this part available for us. So we're going to meet goal 1 and goal 2. So let's add the third goal into our equation. Our profit, has to, we want it to be at least 250000 right? So at least 250000 How do we compute that? What do we do with C4? We multiply by our profit. So 200 C4 plus 500 C5. And then I'm using P for profit for that deviation variable there. Okay, let's, let's add this to our equation. I'm going to make this a little bit easier. I'm going to divide everything by 100. All right? So if C5 is 0, C4 is going to be 1250. So it's going to be up here. And if C5 
if, if C4 is 0, C5 is going to be 5 for me. I'm just going to be right here. And it turns out... Steeper than that. Okay. There we go. And we want to be where? We want to be above this line right here. So we are not going to meet this third goal while still meeting the first two goals because we have now eliminated there from being any feasible region in our thing. So do we, do we want, do we mind going over our profit goal? No. We just don't want to go under it, right? So again, we're going to minimize going under our profit goal right here. So if we, if we look carefully at what point in this feasible region here are we closest to that profit line? It's going to be right at this point right here, right? That's only a little bit away from that profit line. The further up we go here, the further it diverges from that. So that's what we expect our solution to look like. <coughs> Alright? And then finally, I will just put it in here. We know we're not going to meet goal 3. But goal 4 is going to be less than 400 man hours of work. So we do C4 plus one and a half C5 minus um, and in this case, do we mind going over? We do, right? We have to pay overtime at this point. So that is the case where we are going to look at our going over deviation variable instead of our going under deviation variable. All right? So this is the set of equations we would use to solve our solution. Let me show you how we would set this up in our open solver here. So I'm going to pull this down and I'm going to keep the equation up there so we can see that.